Mr. Biker, I believe that that is yours. I call Para Queens. Ah, uh, plush. I have nothing. I have a straight. And I, Dr. DeCrusher, have a royal flush. Oh. Now I believe it is time for you to pay up. Excuse me for interrupting, but all senior officers are supposed to report to the bridge. Rain the sides of planet, they ask me to have people report to the bridge. It's so depressing. restocking of space munchies, we received a distress call from the urea system. Yeah, and using our neat computer system, we tracked the signal to the planet. <clears throat> Isn't that in the neural zone? Confirmed. I feel tension and fear. Now, while our treaty with the Herculoids forbids us from entering the neural zone, the Prime Director, the very core of our mission, tells us, nay, demands us to respond to this emergency. So what are we going to do? We hold a meeting. Captain's log, Stardate 1009-0743, Pi on 2. I've decided to hold an officer's meeting to discuss our next plan of action. The importance of communication among my crew is never more accentuated Ready than to go, time... sir. Yes. Mr. Biker, at ease before you sprain something. <sighs> Number two, despite Confederation protocol, I do not like being addressed as sir. I'm sorry, ma'am. Ma'am will do in a crunch, but I prefer Captain. Aye, aye, old captain, my captain. Please be seated while Maglev is engaged. Deck 7, conference room. Deck 7. So, captain, you see the movie last night on 10 forward? 10. No, deck 7! Deck 7. No, number 2, I had an appointment at sick bay last night. Sick bay. Computer, stop! Now listen carefully. 
This turbo lift is not to stop, change course, or anything else until we reach deck seven. Understood? Proceed. Deck seven. Thank you for riding Maglev. Thank you all for coming. It's good to see you all again. We just saw you on the break a second ago, John. I'm aware of that, Dr. DeCrusher. Thank you. Number two, will you please sit down? I'm waiting for you, Your Excellency. Damn it, Will. I feel like standing right now, and I feel peculiar with you standing too. And stop calling me Your Excellency, you patronizing twit. Sorry, sir. I don't know what I was thinking. Shut your eyes. Stutter him, Captain. Good grief, no, Mr. Wolf. We're civilized beings here in the 24th and a half century, not barbarians like those Earth people watching our show right now. <laughs> this show sucks. Now then, to the issue at hand. We received a distress call from the planet... <coughs> It is a popcorn. <coughs> I've read books about that, <coughs> but I've never been there. Nobody returned from <coughs> alive. I thought <coughs> was a myth. That's what they thought of. <coughs> Until they found out last year that all the myths were true. <coughs> a planet in the Laverne system, thought to be a retirement colony. Little data is known. I thought it would be nice if we all had a chat about what we should do. Typical pecan. You know, if this was Captain Cork, he wouldn't have to ask us. He'd just rush right in and save the day. No meetings, none of this. Patty cake diplomacy with the aliens? You're such a wuss. Wuss, Dr. DeCrusher. Accessing. Ah, wimpy, non masculine, unmacho, weak in character, impotent, flaccid. Impotent. Thank you, Mr. Datum. Now, there will be no more comparisons of me to the childish cowboy antics of Captain Quirk. The man is dead, and I have no intention to mimic his behavior. Yeah, you know Quirk, that's for sure. As Shakespeare once wrote, to thine own self be true. If you're French, why do you sound so British? Don't let the comparison get you, Captain. You were your own person, full of masculine and feminine qualities. While part of you wants to be a little space cowboy, the other part of you is angry at those repressed emotions. So I silence her, Captain. No, Mr. Walk, that's free therapy. Wait a minute. Wimpley, what are you doing here? Well, I thought if I sat here and listened to you guys, I might learn something so I could save the day by the end of the episode. Go to your room, Wimpley. There'll be no heroics for you this episode. How dare you speak to my daughter, uh, my son that way, you egg-headed Kojak reject. Mon Dieu! All of you just shut up. And let's get on with it. Number two, stop touching me. Now I think we should investigate this distress call. What do each of you think? We'll start with you, number two, and go around counterclockwise. Well, I think it's an excellent idea. I wish I'd thought of it myself. Counselor Doy? I sense compassion, warmth, and joy. It must be the children on deck eight. Thank you, Counselor. Mr. Warp. Uh, I think we should assume battle stations to swiftly down upon the city's location while we have... The... Thank you, Mr. Warp. Mr. Dayton. All, all distress signals bear investigation according to Confederation Manual 17, Section 12B, Lines 8 through 19. The most obvious solution is to proceed as you have suggested. However, may I note that if Captain Quirk had been here... Thank you, Mr. Dayton. Bobbley? Very well. Jojo? Hey, yeah, let's check it out. Sounds great, doesn't it, guys? This is neat. What a great idea. All right. We'll do as Mr. Datum suggested. Carry on. Use the fork, John Luke. Computer. What's up, bud? Access date on the planet. Uh, this is a class C planet. It has about 10,000 life forms once employed on network television. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Datum, what is the meaning of this outlandish garb? I have decided to study part culture of the 1970s. To acquire the 70s experience, I have decided to mimic parts of its culture. Had I feelings, I might describe this as groovy. Should I say that correctly, Captain? Hmm. Yes, groovy. Carry on your study, Mr. Datum, but be sure that you do not disturb anyone with that funky rhythm. Right on, Big Daddy. Warp factor six, please. One, two, three, and six, Captain. Sacredly. Not factor in the mathematical sense, Mr. Warp. Go ahead, warp factor six. Sorry, Captain. I have what's on upon myself and my family name. Let's try this again. Warp, engage. Banana, will you marry me? No! That's enough! Warp engines on! Gosh, I love this ship. It's so cool! 
Mr. LaFondue, estimated time to arrive at planet Earth. Four minutes, Captain. Hmm, that's awfully fast. We're a fast ship. We move beyond the speed of light traveling through warp space. Isn't science great? If you'd like to learn more about space and warp speed, you may like to read Uncle Quigley's Rocket by Jamie Gadfrey. Look for it in your public library. I didn't like this book. It made my head hurt. Four minutes, eh? Enough time for a commercial break, Mr. Warp? Negative. I see. Carry on. Time! Three minutes, 32 seconds. Shine, sir. Make it so. I sense impatience and boredom. and use the main deflector dish to form a matter energy conduit. That might protect us. Jojo, uh, if we use the main deflector dish with the to transporter trans beam initialize the, the transspatializer, when will it be back? Yeah, bad. My guess is three to four days. Three to four days? Transferring auxiliary power to secondary couplers. We'll clear the field well before that. Uh, capacitors online, building up energy charge, ordering pizza with shiitake mushrooms. Oh, sir. Clear the field. Number two, take note. This is why we wear red uniforms and he wears a gold one. <laughs> Shall I slap him, sir? Yes, no. No, that's an order, mister. Sorry, guys. Plan of ah, population 5,723,258,523, 24, ooh, 22, 73% oxygen, 27% nitrogen atmosphere, five known races of humanoids, 83 known languages, average 1.73 BCRs per household. Thank you, Mr. It. Datum. Groovy, sir. Slow to impulse. Open hailing frequencies, Mr. Wong. Slowing to impulse. Opening hailing frequencies. Oh, hi! Oh, this is Jean-Luc Picard of the USS Pontiac. Captain, where is... Let me establish contact first. Agreed. This is Jean-Luc Picard of the USS Pontiac. We received a distress call from this location. Oh, thank heaven. Quickly. This is Confederation officer Captain uh, Han So. Yeah. Beep, beep, up. Uh, I'm... Being attacked by mutant carnivorous turtles. Help me! Here are the coordinates. Beat me up! Beat me up! Input, everyone. Number two. Oh, well, you're the boss, big guy. Quickly! Mr. Datum? I suggest you beam him without further ado. Hurry up, beam him up here. What are you waiting for? Well, let's do it. Come on. Come on. Want to beam off directly to the bridge from these coordinates. Oh, sorry, Captain. The transporters are flying at the moment. Oh, <laughs> sorry, sir. I've been forgetting to plug it in. Hold on a second now. Hurry! They're eating my eyeballs! Ah! Oh. Ha! Thanks for the assist. You must be Captain Stubing, right? Love, exciting, and new. <laughs> Your eyeballs appear to be in fair shape, sir. Eyeballs? Oh, yeah, right. Well, I just needed an excuse to get off that plane. Much too boring. Shall I maim him, sir? Not quite yet, Mr. Warp. Let's see what his game is. Who are you, and what do you want? I am James T. Crook, of the original USS Pontiac. I've been left here on the planet <coughs> for... Retired actors, abandoned, left to play problematic trouble with the radio. I felt it was time to 
explore strange new women, to seek out new loves and new female encounters, to boldly back babes where no man has backed babes before. Stop the music. <laughs> I do not appreciate being coerced into beaming you aboard my ship. Mr. Datum, set course for Starbase 3, where we will drop off Captain Quirk into the museum where he belongs. I would dig to have the honor of shaking your hand. Make love, not war. Peace, love, and happiness. Keep on trucking, Big Daddy. Quite a lovely, um, ship you have here, Captain. And who might you be? I might be public. Yes, that you are. Counselor Joy. Would you like me to counsel you in my cabin later? Oh, counsel me. Sir, so, we come. Mind if I have a seat for all time? Well, I'd really I prefer if you... Warp? No, slow to it. Oh, Mr. Warp, what is the alarm? Unidentified craft approaching unlike any type we've encountered before, surrounded by unknown energy fields of uncertain magnitude. Wait! I faced this before. Shields up, black on phasers full power, load, cruiser, torpedoes. Yeah, belay that order. Oh. Computer, how's my hair? I'm in command here. We don't go off half cocked into battle. Mr. Warp, open a hailing frequency and send a hallmark greeting. All languages. That's nice. Shields up, load the crouton torpedoes, lock on phasers, and get out of my chair. Boom, boom. I think I sent hostility, Captain. Weapons, sir? Not until my signal. They may just be misunderstood. Oh, oh, oh. oh hell! Fire at will! No, no warp! Warp speed, Captain. Oh. No, not warp speed! I meant no, Mr. Warp. Do not fire at will, Viker, but at your own will. I do not hold anyone, sir. I sense misunderstanding. We're not supposed to cool down when we warp. What happens to the inertial dampeners? Working. Inertial dampeners are presently too soggy to operate. They are hanging out on the line of tanks. Captain, the enemy ship has been identified as belonging to a man named Warren, believed to be killed at the end of Star Red 2, but resurrected by the Sega Genesis bomb. He's probably quite angry at the Confederation, sir. Told you he's angry. I felt it. So do we all. Number two, I suggest we beam you over to his ship to try and straighten things up. But your highness, what if I engage in fist fight? I look too pretty today. Number two, this is in order. Now go get some of that General Foods intergalactic mocha and go make nice nice with the angry man. Assemble your away team. Aye, sir. Uh, Warp and Dory, you with me. You will need you with the red shirt. Me? Why me? I'm too young to die. <laughs> Must have left it on. Kill. Oh my god. This! Oh, what? You! Sending him into a death trap. I know. He killed Mr. Splotch. And he won't stop till his last breath when he'll spit at me. Okay. Oh, Rourke approaching, Captain. Rourke! Fire, Mr. Warp. You're fired, Warp. Fire. I give the orders here. Mr. Datum, visual, on screen. Is that really the name of Warp? The full clean exit name is Rosanna Warp. <laughs> Still alive after far too many sequels. How's your son, Quirk? I heard he died in your third movie. Your power's tattoo. Why'd you do TJ Hooker? Why do you sound Latino when you're supposed to be Indian? I hear you directed a bomb on the fifth movie. What a shame from such an actor as yourself. At least I'm still acting. At least I have my hair. Why did you pay? This captain is not so vain. What are you hiding? You are so weak. He's stalling for time. End communications. I sense fear. Good, he must be frightened as a wounded animal. I'm talking about Jojo.
Now then, no more attacks. Number two, ready the mocha. I'll get tea. Mr. Datum, you ready snacks. I have researched some groovy brownies, sir. No, 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 you cannot silence me. I must be heard. I have found a way to break the communications lock. I am rock. Smiles, everyone. Smiles. Can't we shut him up? No, but we can shut you up. I sense anger, Pablo. I think you just redirected your unreturned love in the form of aggression towards the captain. Don't tell me what I'm feeling, Counselor. You do? You still like him. You're just mad because he pays more attention to the ship than he does. Wait, you. One minute. Now I'm sensing something. Anger, boiling, seething rage, and it's coming from me! Oh! Hey, Mom, guess what? You hit puberty. Congratulations. No, no, no. I figured out how to stop Rourke. I beamed over some of my peanut butter into his chocolate. Listen. Quirk, I will take thee by the nose and remove each hair one by one until... Uh, ooh, what is this? This, this is an outrage. You beamed your peanut butter onto my chocolate. It's, it's... It's delicious. Mmm, this is incredible. I must have more, more. You did it, Wimbley, little nose picker. You shut him up. You saved the day. Oh, now the captain's gonna like you better than me. Excuse me, young man. Isn't it way past your bedtime? Oh, <laughs> my. Hey. Kids. Captain's log started. Supplemental. I'm back in command again. We've returned Captain Picard to Earth, where he's been promoted to Admiral and will spend the next 20 years at science fiction conventions. Ha! Wesley has been promoted to Ensign and given a later curfew. We're going to return to the planet and dig up Mr. Splotch, Boney, and the rest of the crew of the original Pontiac. In the meantime, I have something called a holodeck to explore.